going, What's going on, on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Baker. Well, welcome to episode 93, live from Orlando at RoofCon. We got some other TC Backer members on the team here. We got Glenn Orr. You guys have seen him a couple times now. And we got Lauren Homko's very first episode. Um, she's the, the woman behind the scenes that runs the sales force. Um, we're going to be talking... <laughs> we're going to be talking a little bit about what's going on down here. Um, the event's going to be starting next week, so we don't really have a, too much information on you know stuff we've seen yet. Um, a lot of the stuff's going to be happening tomorrow, um, but we're still going to be talking about that. We're going to talk a little bit about women in construction and how important they are. Um, Lauren's going to have some good good insight on that, you know, from from a from a woman's point of view. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's great. It's great to be down here. Glad that we can pull this live and listen. <laughs> Episode 93, um, we are what, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 episodes away from exactly two years of doing this, and uh, we were just talking earlier right before the show here that, uh, you know, the show always goes on no matter what, I mean, we've been through power outages, floods, literally floods, while we were filming live, we had three inches of water that was flowing underneath our feet, um, you know, we between generators, needing generators, yep. the show shutting down in the middle of the show, but then firing it back up. Um, you know, and when we go on the road, that's it's very special to me. You know, where we go live from, you know, IRE uh, today. Now we're in Orlando. Super excited about RoofCon and uh, the things that we're going to take away from it. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted you guys with me is because, you know, anywhere Jana and I go someplace, whether it be uh, Windstorm or the IRE, there's always so much to learn and so much to take back from it. And it's just too much for one person. So I thought it would be a great idea to bring you guys to, uh, you know, help see my vision and some of the things that I talk about in our meetings you'll hear, some of the speakers say, some of the products that I talk about. I know RoofScope's going to be here, Chris from RoofScope and his team are going to be here. We'll go live at some point with them throughout the week or weekend. Um, you're going to meet a lot of great people. A lot of people that you see or follow on Facebook, they'll be here from Deshaun to, uh, crap, I don't know how many people. There's going to, there's, yeah, there's at least 2,500 people attending this. Um, I'm not even sure how many vendors I know. Uh, I think GAF will be here. Job Nimbus will be here. RoofScope's here. Um, all kinds of vendors, which will be really cool. There'll be a lot of, um, you know, outside meetings going on and the main stage and just great speakers, man. Really educational and I look forward to it and I look forward to getting back home on our Tuesday morning meeting and going over, you know, letting everybody know kind of like what we learned, what we went over. And, and just brainstorm on that and, and expand and grow from there. So Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm going to be fired up. I think we're all going to come back with some fresh ideas. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and like we were talking last night, Ty, if, if, if not anything else, mm -hmm. at least these things, when we go and we see the people talking about, you know, this is what you guys need to be doing, this, you know what I mean, and giving yep. suggestions, yep. it at least lets us know that some of the things that we're doing, we're on the right path. Absolutely. You know what I mean? We are doing yes. the, the right things and the small tweaks that we can make, you know, try this out. And that's one of the things that, that that we pride ourselves in is being able to, you know, change. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yep. We roll with the punches. If something doesn't work, we try something new. Right. And that's yeah. the great thing about our Tuesday meeting, having all yes. those people in that room. Yes. That we can we can bounce ideas off each other, figure out if, if a process is working, if it's not working, do we gotta change it. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm just really excited, man. I'm really excited to see all the people that right. you know, we follow all these people, a lot of these people in these roofing groups and stuff yeah, man. and and hear them, hear them talk on, on daily, basically. Yes. Um, to actually yeah. see these guys and hopefully maybe shake their hand and, and you know, get get on a first name basis yeah. there and, and you right. know, really pick their brain. It's, right. it's going to be maybe cool. introduce our you know like you said introduce ourselves, invite them on the show. Maybe um, you know I know David Carroll from Dope Marketing will be here. Um, just a lot of big names in mm -hmm. the roofing industry will be here. A lot yeah. of big influencers. A lot of people, like you said, that you know we watch and follow on Facebook and, and learn a lot from. I know personally, I learn a lot from. Um, I'm totally excited to actually meet them face to face, and even more excited to have you guys experience this with me because yeah. there's really no greater joy than to watch the light bulb go off in someone else, right? Um, and then take it, like I said earlier, take it back, take it home, influence everybody else. Hopefully, from there it'll trickle down through. 
Um, and then everybody can start seeing the vision yeah. of where we want to go. And, and, you know, we talk about what the game plan is or, you know, our, our three month plan or one year plan or three year plan or our, our five year goal. Um, and, and a lot of what we're going to see this week and weekend is, is plays into that. Yeah. Like a lot of that. Yeah. You're probably going to be excited to not be the only guy with a crazy idea in the room anymore. Yes. You know? Yes. Right. <laughs> Every, right. At least the four of us yeah. will be sitting there like the five of us. I'm sorry, Vic. Yeah. Um, the five of us will be sitting in there <clears throat> right. like, yeah, he's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this, this is what we need to be doing. Yes. So, yes. um, yeah. So let's, let's, I guess, get right down into it. Do we want to maybe talk about some of the women in construction? Sure. You know, we, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of females that, um, work with TC backer, mm -hmm. whether it's, it's actual employees that work in the building, right. um, females that work with the vendors that we do business with, um, supporters, um, you know, from, you know, uh, Diane. Yeah. Diane we brought Brooks. you down here with us, Diane, if you're watching. Yeah, I thought we did um, like that. You know, all the girls at the YBA, um, <clears throat> women really do play a big part. And it's mm -hmm. not just, you know, and, and even some of our installers have women that are actually in the field. Absolutely. You know, bending metal, installing yep. shingles. So um, it's a lot different nowadays, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not it's not looked at wildly anymore to have a woman on a no. construction site. No. And, and a lot of these offices, you know, where the, where the big things happen, right. that's run by women. Absolutely. Um, Yes, there's so many, you know, women that don't get the notoriety that they should. You know, Lauren's one of them, and, and you know, Lauren is actually our sales manager. She, she babysits quite a few salespeople, and I, I say that kiddingly, babysits them, but, you know, there, there is a lot of babysitting that goes on, and uh, you got to have tough skin to do that because, you know, with, with our sales force right now, it is all men. Um, we are, have tried to influence more women to get into the construction industry because I think when a lot of people think of the construction industry they don't they, they think right away oh they're gonna swing a hammer right mm -hmm. okay so we have um, we have uh, Kim who is like our CFO we have Jocelyn that's our accounts receivable we have Sam who are who is our uh, accounts payables um, then we have Ashley and Cam who are our costing managers uh, assistant um, so we have a lot of women that are behind the scenes that kind of make this thing go round for us. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting. Plus, Jana was, you know, my, my right hand man for the longest time. I, when, you know, I, it's kind of embarrassing to say on live TV right now, but I, did, I couldn't drive for a long time. So Jana drove me around and held my notebook and ho held my ladder when I had to get the ladder off the truck mm -hmm. and I had to climb up a you know, a sketchy, you know, get on a sketchy roof. That was Jana holding that ladder for me or holding the other end of the, you know, the dummy, the yeah. dummy end of the tape measure and stuff like that. So there is a lot of, you know, great women that are in this industry that, that don't get a big enough shout out that, you know, if it wasn't for you guys, we probably wouldn't be where we're at just because of, you know, your organizational skills or, you know, your communication skills. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes we need uh, something a little more finesse than, you know, us guys tend to, to be a little rammy with things right. and, and to have that woman touch, whether it be, you know, dealing with a difficult homeowner or, you know, keeping, you know, things just organized around the office and stuff like that. It's, and, and just so you know, and if we don't say it enough, we are grateful for you women that, that take care of us guys. You Absolutely, know. man. Absolutely. You guys make us feel appreciated. I think most of the girls that work in the office, I think we feel appreciated. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. that's good. I'm glad you guys feel that way. <clears throat> one, one of my one of my favorite things um, is seeing seeing the change in the guys in the field as far as like the respect level. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I feel like at first, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was probably kind of hard to get, especially our installers, oh, to yeah. mm. listen to what you're saying right. from mm -hmm. the, from you know what I mean on a job site. You know, you got this chick yeah. down here telling them what to do, and it's like mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, they, they actually respect you, and like they to do. see to see that that change, and mm -hmm. even you know the guys in our shop and everything, yep. you know, they they respect her as as an equal, and like that's that's Absolutely. super important because it is that's probably a little harder to earn as a woman, you know what oh, I mean, yeah. and not even trying to be sexist or anything like that, like right. that's that's just how it is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That your your stereotypical. Um, construction company doesn't usually have women in the field so no. you know when one shows up on the site it's like it's becoming more and more prevalent yeah today. absolutely and it's good you know, it's then, a good thing yes for sure it really is you know and you know right now the way things are 
um, you know, with finding good help and, and things of that nature, I'll be honest with you, it seems, it seems to be easier, and I don't know what it is about guys right now, but we'll run an ad looking for installers or mechanics of some kind, and when we ran that ad for uh, a costing uh, assistant mm -hmm. or uh, salespeople or, or whatever, it seemed like there was more women yeah. that applied for that job, and, and Lauren can, you know, agree with me on that. I mean, how many interviews, what was the ratio? to you know men to women that applied for the job it was pretty equal i feel like oh really you think there was yeah. just as many men as there was women yeah really yeah huh i don't remember any men no no being interviewed oh I, that we actually interviewed yes no it was all women i thought you meant applied yeah, yeah. no it was all women yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and that's funny you say that because the guys that did apply mm -hmm. never showed up for the interview. Yeah. They, seriously. Yeah. That was the God's honest truth. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They never showed up. Yeah. You know, it was so crazy, but it seemed like you know, there was more women. So I don't know, you know, guys need to step their game up yeah. a little bit here and get off the welfare or whatever, get off the couch and, and get to work here a little bit. I mean, the, the industry... You know, right now we need you and, and the younger generation. So, you know, this is kind of like a one two punch between, you know, women in the industry and students, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully you can become interested yeah. in getting in the industry. You know what I mean? We need more people. It takes all of us to do this. The average, you know, uh, worker right now is what, 55 years old? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. yeah so man. I feel like we've been kind of blessed between, you know, our workforce of, you know, the, the age ranges that we have and the amount of women that we do have in. In, in our company right now, I feel like we've, we've been very fortunate, and I think a lot of that has to do with our culture as well. Absolutely, you know I mean? man. We I attract. feel like we got a nice handful of right. in each age group. Right. And, you know, we're, we're going to, I don't think we're really going to have a problem where, you know, a whole chunk of guys is just going to leave, you yeah. know, because of age or anything like no. that. So, no, um, no, we have been fortunate, but that's just in the national average, you know, the, the right. tradesman is 55 right. years old. And I think something important in the trades is, you know, they tell you one of the big things when you go into the trades is look for a mentor. Mm -hmm. And we have enough of them at our company. Oh, yeah. Right on. Yeah. You know, That's a really good point. point. That yeah, is a great I point. I look to people like Glenn, Denny, mm -hmm. Chuck on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, especially mm -hmm. Denny, he reminds me a lot of my dad. He, right. No, they're no both bullshit. old school. Yeah, right. right. And in, in the industry their whole life. And. Yep. <clears throat> You know, Denny's philosophy is you're going to learn anything about this product or material, get out here and learn how to install it. That's right. Yeah. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. Absolutely. I so, agree. Definitely when it comes to the trades, looking for a mentor so you can really learn. And right. we've Hands got on. enough of them there yeah, at our company. Yeah, absolutely. Willing, willing to teach. You know, that's, that's a big thing. you got to have not only a mentor, but a mentor that can be patient and willing to teach you, you know, the right way. Right. The right and wrong way to do things because there is a right and wrong way to do things. Yes. Um, and you know you've learned so much since you started. Oh yeah. Here, you know, and and let's talk about the the crazy time that you started. You know, I mean, oh you gosh, left you left a nice a nice job in the healthcare corporate industry. America, corporate America, you know, corporate America, medical sales. Came job. And, came and joined us, and I think the first week. It's two weeks. Everything in. got shut down for COVID. Yep. And you're like, oh my goodness, yep. <laughs> what right. am I gonna do? <laughs> But that was probably yes. the best thing that could have happened because that's it what was. put you in the position to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. you know, right there with Ty, running all yeah. those, those sales appointments and yeah. actually learning from the horse's mouth yeah. exactly how he wants things to be done. Yeah. So, and that's that's even evolved. Yes, you know what I mean. Our process mm -hmm. of doing things over this, these last eighteen months has evolved so much. Yeah, and she's played a big part in that. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Being Absolutely. able to being able to be moldable mm -hmm. and change you know yes. we got you going this direction now we're going to take a right turn and we're going to go this yeah. direction instead so yeah. that's that's really important and i honestly think that 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 kind of trait and that ability to do that you're going to find easier in a, in a woman mm -hmm. than you than you would a guy because yeah. guys are a little bit more hard-headed we're right. a little more stubborn right we know how to do it this is the way that we want to do it and right. it's hard to it's hard to change that sometimes absolutely <clears throat> it is you know and that's a good point too you know um, Lauren did definitely play a big role in that and, and for her, you know, to help adapt to that situation because things, things have been uh, a little challenging over the past 18 months to 24 months. I mean, between, um, you know, the juggling act with the prices and mm -hmm. stuff like that, always changing all the time and already having contracts signed and, and trying to keep people healthy and keep them in a safe environment and, you know, trying to make sure that our customers are in a safe environment, that they feel safe, that we're not bugging them too much. Um, you know, if there is an instance that we need to get in their home 
you know, the guys are wearing face masks and doing what they got to do so the homeowner, you know, feels healthy and safe. And, and, you know, it's just, it has been a challenge. And I think, you know, and that's one of the things that I think, you know, if you're thinking about getting into the trades, you know, you need to come with an open mind. You need to be able to uh, think quick on your feet and you need to be able to, to adapt to situations. Yeah. And Lauren fit that, that to the T, you know, and, and like you said, early on, she was my assistant. So she rode with me to, I don't know how many appointments. All summer. Throughout the course of the day, yeah. you know, yeah. throughout the course of the week. And she was on the roof with me. I showed her how to, you know, do it the old school way, not the aerial, roof aerial way. Mm -hmm. I showed her how to measure gutters, windows, siding, roofing. Um, you know, so like you said, she heard it right from the horse's mouth, the old school traditional way of measuring a roof, right? right? That you don't always need to, to pull a roof scope. And I think a lot of homeowners really admire you know, in both instances, one, seeing a woman up on their roof, and two, just having someone actually come out and inspect their roof. Right. I think that's the difference, and that's what sets us apart mm -hmm. from all other contractors, at least in our area. We will get in the attic. We will see if there's proper ventilation. Right. We will We will see if their basement, or their, I'm sorry, their basement, that's a different topic. Um, their attic, you know, the, the bathroom vent is not venting into the attic, right. that it is going outside into the fresh air. Um, you know, things of that nature. I don't know how many times we've heard homeowners say, well, you're the first one that ever got on my roof. You're the first one that went into my attic to correct the issues of why I needed a roof to begin with. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the thing I tried yeah. to drill home, drive home to her was, is that, you know, we're, we're intake and, and ventilation, you know, exhaust Nazis. Yeah. Like I would say what I, the, the statistic I think is 90% of new homes being built today and over the past 20 years were built with inadequate ventilation. Mm -hmm. So it's really a no brainer. When you go out to these homes today, and especially in our area, because it's really built up over the past 20 mm -hmm. years. Okay. So when you go out to these homes, the ridge vents too short, um, the, the soffit areas blocked off with insulation. So it's kind of a no brainer. Even if they have vented soffit, you can't, you can't tell if that's ventilating correctly yeah. from the outside. You got to get in the attic. Yes, it's so deceiving. And the best way to do that, especially in a newer home that's been built over the past 15 years, crawl up in the crawl space, mm -hmm. turn the attic light out. And if you see no light, there's probably an issue. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. it's that. That's a, that's a big one. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, dude, like that's that that's invaluable training. Mm -hmm. You know what right. I mean? Being able to get out there and do that. It would have been way different if you would have just came on and had to learn through online course mm -hmm. or something, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, we have we have the tools at our fingertips that mm -hmm. we can do that through our, some of our partners. You know, GAF, um, you, mm -hmm. remember, you remember the S, SGT, right? Yeah, um, SVG? The, the SVG, that's what yeah. it is. I don't know why I always say SGT. STDs? Um, yeah. Is that what channel <laughs> yeah. did, um, did Tina take her pen, penicillin <laughs> before she got here in Florida? We did warn you, Tina. All you need is a ZPAP. They do have an urgent right care up. here. Glad you know you know all about that, ain't buddy. Clears we don't even want to get on that right. subject. Sorry. Um but no, so like we have the tools at our fingertips to do it that way, mm -hmm. but that hands on training, nothing is yeah. better than physically getting on that roof, getting in there, seeing the issues firsthand, um, and, and being able to learn that way. At least at least in my yeah. opinion. You know, Anybody can, can go out and measure a roof and say this is our you know, your roof's 15 squares, this is what we charge per square. Anybody can do that. Right. But right. to actually check what's going, why do you need a new roof? Other right. than just the fact that your shingles are 10 years old, you shouldn't need a new roof. There's right. something else going on other than just your shingles. Right. Absolutely. 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 It's about or education. Install. Right? Most of it was is that I think the codes were different back then, and I, don't, yeah. I really don't think anyone knew any different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until, right. like, the technology had advanced to the point where you can actually test those kind of things yeah. today or you know you go through the the trials and errors of it you know right. what i mean you got you know sometimes you don't realize that there's a problem until the problems happen mm -hmm. you know and then they're like well wait a minute that's this is an issue we need to do this now and i think a lot of the reason that in the the housing industry when these hill, these homes are built mm -hmm. there's a there's a technical equation that is that's pretty serious mm -hmm. it's a pretty gnarly equation to figure yeah. out how much yeah. ventilation you need yeah um and what types of ventilation right a lot of times the installers and stuff that are out there they're not educated on that to know exactly what's needed you know it, i i can tell you, i can tell you firsthand our installers 
You know, it's very easy if if our supplier shorts a piece of ridge vent, mm-hmm. my installer is not going to know. Yeah. Like, he's not going to be like, hey, we're one piece short here. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of times they just think, well, they evenly we'll center, space it on yeah, the ridge. We'll center it you up. know what I mean? You know, that's, um, or if the framers don't cut the ridge open right, enough. Right, right. You right. know, it's, it's exactly. very easy to mistake well, that di- kind of stuff. Different ridge vents will allow, you know, uh, ventilation for, right. for the amount of square footage, too. Yeah. So, and that's the thing, too. you got to look into that. Like, what, what does each ridge vent equate you know what the, the length of it yeah will allow the proper intake or exhaust yeah or too much ventilation. yeah you can you know have, I mean? too, you much can have too much right your, your air gets confused in there you know that some people are like well i got these gable vents i got i got vented soffit i have the ridge vent and i got this sweet attic fan and it's like one of them's acting like an <laughs> intake which yeah. it shouldn't so you, so your ridge vent or your your gable vents are acting like an intake yeah Okay, and it's it's exhausting out the ridge vent. Well, that three foot section is the only section in your right. roof line. You got that dead that, air that, underneath yeah, the bottom. Yeah, you got another twelve hundred square foot of of attic space that's not even ventilating yep. because your gable vents aren't acting as exhaust. They're they're acting like an intake. Yeah, yeah. So those are things that you know we've learned the hard way sometimes. Um, you know, and I think a lot of old school roofers like like you know. Uh, didn't understand. I think everyone thought, you know, if you had a gable vent, you were okay. And I, I mean, today, even inspectors think that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That if you have gable vents, so let's say you got vented soffit with gable vents, that's still not good enough because mm-hmm. again, your gable vents are acting like intake, right. or you got to get a cross breeze for it to blow out the other end. It just and that just that three foot right. section is the only area that's ventilating. Yeah, we can talk about that all night long. Oh, but, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But anyhow, ventilation's a big one. Um, so Glenn, let's 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 hear about what are you most excited about, or or you know what what do you want to take from this? I want to see some of these people speak. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Like I said, I've been doing this a long time, and I never came to nothing like this. Awesome. You know, just learn. Yeah. You know, I might learn you know multiple things. Yeah. I mean, it's yep. Keeping it in mind. Absolutely. Else Trying has to, to keep up with the new technologies yes. and things like that. Like I said, everything changes. I'm glad you wanted to come. I'm every you you know, every come. week something changes. There's a new product yep. out and everything else. Absolutely, man. Yeah, and, I, and honestly, man, you can never get too much motivation. I mean, and, and no. just some of the way that these guys can talk and they can you know make you look at things a little bit differently. Yes. Really get the juices flowing and and you know yeah I'm I, dude I'm super excited I I would agree you mm-hmm. know I'm I'm excited to see the actual people speak yeah I I feel like the as far as the technology goes I can see that kind of stuff on the internet on that kind of stuff but to actually physically get in front of some of these people speaking that's where you can't get that online. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. You can't watch a video. I mean, you can watch a video of them, but it's yes. different. You know well, then I mean? you different. might meet some people you, you emailed or talked to yes. before mm-hmm. through Facebook or right. wherever. Right. You know, actually get to meet people face to face. Yeah. Put a face with. Right. Yeah. You know, we, we post in this in uh, the roofing and solar community Facebook group. If anyone in there is watching, thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a there's a guy in there that's going to be speaking here. His name's David Taggart. They call him the Roof Poppy. Mm-hmm. He's got a, He owns a. Uh, he owns a roofing company down in Texas, and he's he's real big on like the, the sales and solar and that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to see oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched a couple of his videos on the weekend. He's a real laid back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's he's just your, your your typical guy. You know what I mean? You can just tell that he's authentic. Right. He gives it to you how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has a lot of really good nuggets. And and you know, and there's that's just one of right. the people. You know what I mean? And yes. he's not even really like a, one of the big headliners mm-hmm. either. It's just, mm-hmm. there's going to be some really, really good knowledge down here, man. Yes. And not even, not even all of it is, is even going to be roofing, you know. No. No. no some of them are inspirational speakers. Right, yeah. right, right. John so they, they may not even Maxwell. say yeah. anything right. about he's, installing a roof. No. no. I've been reading John Maxwell's books since I was in high school. Right. He's just, he's Yeah, he's the headliner. Yeah. Yeah, he's, that's going to be great. He's like the Tony Robinson of his... Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's yeah. amazing. Yeah, right. I was telling my, I called my dad. I'm like, I forgot to tell you he was gonna be here. I'm mm-hmm. like, John Maxwell. He's like, that's cool as shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you heard of him. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. There's a lot. Like, I mean, the list goes on and on and on of the people that'll be here. And and like you said, so there's there's breakout meetings on leadership. There's breakout meetings on uh, like management, um, insurance, how to do insurance claims, su- supplements. Um, the insurance companies will be here, not the insurance company, but the the adjusters and um, people that help you with the claims. Mm-hmm. They'll be here and they'll be at the expo. So there's going to be a lot of people 
that we can speak to after the conference. Like if we have questions, like Lauren, I'm sure you got hundreds of questions. Oh, yeah. I bought a like, new notebook just for this. Right, right. <laughs> so like, you know, what, what, what happens when you come up against an insurance company yeah. that doesn't want to cover, like that doesn't care about the manufacturer's warranty? Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? Because I've heard that, that the, the insurance companies only worry about, you know, the local codes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, how do you deal with that situation? Right. And they don't really care about the, mm -hmm. the shingle manufacturer's warranty. You know what I mean? Or whatever the question might be. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? I'm sure you got hundreds of them. So these, the, the people that you need to speak to will be here. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Which is kind of cool. Um, and then, you know, uh, our boys from RoofScope. Yep. You know what I mean? The guys that have helped us scale, and I know in our costing department, especially with new construction. So the difference between RoofScope and like an Eagle View or, or a Hover or an E360, the coolest thing about them and why we use them so much is is because of our new construction. Yeah, they actually do blueprint takeoffs for you. So instead of doing it like manually, like we used to do it, um, or with Plan Swift and drawing it up and 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 missing something, well, Roofscope, you send them your plans. They have like a ninety five percent accuracy. I don't know if you've ever done a takeoff before, right? But I don't know if I've ever gotten it a hundred percent. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Right. So there, yeah. there's almost it's almost impossible to get it. And honestly, I don't think we've ever had one that was actually botched up to the point where we had lost money or anything like that along those lines. But but that's the really cool thing about RoofScope is that they uh, they do our not just roofing aerials and siding and mm -hmm. gutters, you know, and many more. I think stucco paint, masonry, and some other things like that that we don't use. But they do a whole lot of stuff. Plus the Pro Docs. Mm -hmm. that they have I was digging around in there the other day yeah. um, and actually after you saw me digging around I got back in there there's like so much more that that thing does really yes yeah. they're products I really like that um, so JP needs to get on the ball and yeah. uh, get that to integrate in there yeah anyhow but um, along with the roofing aerials and I know Vic is looking uh, forward to seeing meeting and Chris and I let him know and he was yeah, like, I'm looking anytime. forward to that too yeah and that's dude that's that's super clutch being able to do mm -hmm. the prints like that because I mean if anyone doesn't realize when you when you get a blueprint for a new construction home mm -hmm. you know let's just take uh, a Prescott for example right we, we do a home for one of our builders it's a Prescott model it can have seven different elevations mm -hmm. each of those elevations have 12 different options right um, you know, and to, to sit down and put man hours, you know, with a ruler or in front of a computer, um, trying to get all those different options and elevations and everything equated into a number. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have much time from the time you get, you receive those blueprints until you actually got to do an install. So, right. you know, to that, that's an invaluable for us. You know, we, we realized not, and it wasn't even that long ago that we realized like, this makes much more sense for us. Absolutely. You know, let's just get them in. We'll send them out. Not just financially, we, but time, time yeah, wise, man. and efficiency. Vic, what's the longest you ever had to wait for an entire home plan? And I'm talking a whole home plan, like you were speaking yeah. about, like the different elevations and everything. What's the longest you ever had to wait to get roofing, one? Roofing inside. Yes. Roofing comes back fairly quickly, maybe three, four days. Tops. Siding, depending on the size, could be a week. Oh, really? Yes, okay. But, I, I didn't realize it was quite that long. But right, but I want to interject something with all this you guys are bringing up. Mm -hmm. Since I deal with this on a daily basis, for me to have roof scope in, the cost effective, the time management for me, yeah. Yeah. alone, yeah. it frees me up <laughs> to do all the other things I need to be doing. You know, right. right. Instead of sitting in front of a computer on plan swift. Right. You know. Right. Something that big, like you said, Chris, that could take me a week to do. Yeah. In between all the other yes. things that come up. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there's no way that you can that that you can say that you can invest that entire week into that. Right. And number one, have it 95% accurate and mm -hmm. get all your other stuff that we need on a daily basis. You know, right. shortage of materials. I'm not getting paid on this purchase order. This, you know what I mean? All the problems that arise yeah. from the amount of volume that we do, right. you know, to have your 100% focus, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like when you have 40 tasks, you can be good at 40 tasks, mm -hmm. but you're not going to be great at right. all of them. You yeah. know what I mean? It's you you got, you, yeah. mediocre. Right. Absolutely. Best. So, so it's, it's better. We found that it's better to be able to free that up. Any little bit that we can free up of to, to get him working on that kind of stuff, it was mm -hmm. just a game changer. Man. Yeah. And well, they're great to work with, yeah. too. So. It, they, I mean, they are. Our, our, our sales guy, or whatever you want to call him, our, our account manager. Our rep. He, what's that? Our rep. Our rep. Yeah. Yes. 
because he's definitely not like a salesperson. He's definitely our, our, our partner yeah. in crime. Um, that, like you said, they're so easy to work with. But um, now we have builders. The builders have confidence in our takeoffs now as well. Not that they didn't before, but because we can turn them out so quickly. Like we've helped builders actually, you know, be more efficient themselves because mm -hmm. now their POs are more accurate. Right. You know what I mean? Like Gemcraft leans on us to get their stuff right. Right. You know, on the same home that they've built for the past 25 years, they still haven't been able to get it right because they're manually doing takeoffs. Mm -hmm. Like for whatever, for whatever reason, you just miss something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Return it's walls, human error. reverse cables, you know I mean? up and error. overs. Right. You know what I mean? There's jogs, you know, especially on townhomes yeah, yeah. and things of that nature. Send it off the roof scope. Mm -hmm. And what, that, what also that does too is it's helping them. Mm, yes. Us using roof scope is helping them because now what that does is free me up to look at those POs. Yes. And say, eh. something's wrong. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It. It's yeah. been a game changer for us. Yeah. Yeah. How easy is it to miss the dotted line on the end of the house where they show right. the optional soffit on the side, on the rake? Oh, right on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very easy. And that's, yeah. you know, 17 by 2 foot. Right. Yes. That's a lot of shingles. You're, yeah. you're short. That's drip edge. You're short. That, you know what I mean? Like that's that matters. That, that all that little yeah, stuff. Yeah. Multiply that by the amount of volume that you right. do. It's a game changer, man. And they're so accurate. And like I said, it's it's just an invaluable service. So it is. Anyone out there that runs any kind of new construction, um, we definitely recommend you guys check out Roofscope or re um, or retail. They yeah. they do the same thing. Yeah, as Eagle absolutely. View. So it's not just yeah. not just new construction. No. but that's why we you know like them so yes. much. Not, the only reason, but that's one of the big reasons yeah, why we like them. For so sure, much. it's definitely one of the bigger reasons because of the the time efficiency and the money that we save. Because think about it, I'd have to hire five more estimators with the amount of work that we do mm -hmm. in a weekly, Easily. monthly, yearly basis. We wouldn't be able to bid anything. I mean, yeah. think about it. You get one blueprint that's got eight different elevations, okay? With the, I don't know how many different home plans. Yeah. With just the one, okay? Yeah, there's sixty seventy take, pages sometimes. It would man. take Vic a week to do one of them these guys are turning out we send them 10 15 at a time and w in a week we get them back yeah you know yeah, what i mean as long as we job. have that week but i mean it, it's it's just amazing the team that they have over there i don't know how they get it done um but we do appreciate you guys over at roof thank yeah, you guys very much for for helping us grow being a great partner of ours and uh you know we're not afraid now to go out and bid more work because that was probably that had that, that that was definitely one of our biggest issues was is that we just couldn't turn out estimates quick enough. Yeah, you know for sure. Uh, Vic's bidding on some commercial stuff right now uh, with Harkins. We feel very confident about it um, because you know with the help of Roofscope and and other things. So whether Vic did those takeoffs manually, he didn't have to worry about the production work that we had coming in, so he could focus more on the Harkins job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not worry about the Ryans and the Lenars and the k Hoffs and Gemcrafts that are coming down the pipe like nonstop right. rapidly. The, the 15 to 30 POs probably double that that come in in a day's time. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and we like to go through them with a fine tooth comb. And it's something we didn't do for, for a long time. Right. I mean, we went off of what the purchase order said. We never questioned it. And the thing yep. is that we never took into consideration. Once we drive that first nail, basically that purchase order is a contract. Yeah. yeah so you we accepted agreed. that that was yep. right. We, we agreed to it. So if, if their purchase order was all three squares, and let's talk about like a 10 or 15 unit townhome, okay? Each unit's off two squares. Mm -hmm. That that's ten to, to fifteen squares of shingles that were short. Yeah. Or let's say we're doing the takeoff ourselves, and let's say that we were over. Hell, that could be twelve squares of shingles over. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it can go either way, and to have that accuracy from roof scope. It's like the the fear of like, oh shit, is this right or is this wrong? Is this like they have removed that anxiety for yeah. us? Absolutely. Yeah. And Lauren, you know, from a sales point of view, mm -hmm. how uncomfortable would you feel? You know, you, let's just say, for for example, you're working with a homeowner. They're kind of tight on funds. They really had to go back and forth with, with their budget and all that yeah. kind of stuff to see if they could fit a roof in. And we show up, we put the mm -hmm. roof on, and we got 10 extra squares of shingles on the roof. Yeah. That's an uncomfortable conversation. You know what so I mean? Because a lot that's, of times they're that's a lot of money's difference. They're looking, uh -huh. they're looking to see what's... I've had people, yeah. even when they see one bundle of shingles, mm -hmm. Am I paying for that? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah like, you can have it. Yeah. It's yours. Right. Yep. It's yours. Yeah. Right. I just want to interrupt real quick. Hi, Kennedy. I've seen your text in here. I hope you're. I hope you're having fun at Grammy's house. Um, but 
that I mean that's that's invaluable and that's a tough conversation and just mm-hmm. just that little bit right there to to take that off of our salespeople you know the pressure of, of making sure that these things are right we mm-hmm. we just know that when we send it out it's going to be right yeah so I have the utmost confidence that when it goes out and it comes back right the numbers are there I don't even right. have to worry yeah. about it don't even yeah. have to don't, don't even have to think about it yes yeah. and, and, and it lets it lets us. You know, it gives our builders and stuff on the new construction side confidence when we come to them and say, hey, your purchase order is, is two square over. You need to take two square off that. Right. I mean, that. I mean, that's being honest. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I mean? And they yeah. love that. Mm-hmm. And so, and you're right, because it's not always the shortest. It right. Be, it's, just it works both hard. ways. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 100 yeah. extra squares yeah. on the yeah. townhome. Yeah. Right. 100. I didn't, I, that's, not a, that's not a misspoken. A Tyler can, can speak firsthand. Giovanni and all those guys had to hand offload them. A hundred squares. That started with the roof. Off a ten pitch building. roof, man. Yeah. Yep. All I had to do was look it up. Yep. Yeah. You that's know? amazing. Yep. And they have helped us create a database. Oh yeah. So that's that's even more exciting. Right. Yep. So yep. that's duplicatable for us at in other areas where we're working for the same builder in different states. Now we have access to our server, you know, so when they're building those same homes, same home types and styles yeah. in Virginia, basically because most most builders are building the same, sometimes a little bit different, but that that database is duplicatable for us no matter Absolutely. where we're at. We can be in Florida working, Absolutely. we can be in the Carolinas working, we can be in Virginia or Delaware or Maryland, and it's the same. Yeah. I mean, it saves me time. Absolutely. I went from, ha- I went from having to spend 15 to 20 hours a week ordering materials on roofs mm. for, you know, for weekly orders. I can do an order in a minute, 30 seconds mm-hmm. now. You know what I mean? You just tell yeah. me what the elevation is. I look up in my system. It takes me longer to actually type in the emails mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff that I'm sending them to than it does to actually put the order together. So. Just to put it out there, man, it's been a big help <clears throat> having Tim and now Ashley yes, because really for sure. they're the ones behind all this now. Right, yep. Yeah. You know, they're, they're working. <clears throat> and let me tell you something. They're, they're like policing those POs, man. Like they belong Tim and there. Ashley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. No doubt. It's right. definitely a noticeable difference, man. Yeah. It's a noticeable difference. Yeah. So, yeah, roof cut or... Uh, Roofscope's going to be there at RoofCon. They got mm-hmm. a big booth. Yep. Um, there's some other big players that are going to be there. GAF's going to be there, right? I didn't see any setup. You didn't see a setup? I didn't. Hmm. No. No. I don't know if they they're backed def- out. They're a sponsor of RoofCon. I, yeah. I didn't know if they would gotcha. show gotcha. that. Gotcha. Yeah, that's true. I know they're Job, job pretty... Nimbus will be here. Um, I don't even know who all is going to be here. Yeah, we're but, gonna find out. We're gonna try to yeah. go live a little bit from there. Yeah, maybe tomorrow or for sure or you Friday. Said one of the days. Will be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is job progress? No. 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 Mm-hmm. Nimbus. Um, yeah, I looked for a list to see what all the vendors or sponsors or whoever was gonna be here, and I couldn't find one. Vix out of juice over there. Juice. Sneak, <laughs> sneak around the <laughs> other door. Honestly, GF might not be here because of COVID. That Probably. they're, that, they're yeah. very strict. Yeah, yeah. Because well, you you were saying at, at the IRE, IRE they they had a booth set up, but they didn't have it manned. They didn't even have anyone at it. No. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was kind of a bummer. Yeah, it's yeah. it's gonna be exciting, man. I'm well, I'm I'm looking forward to actually getting in there tomorrow. It opens up mm-hmm. at eight thirty. Um, we're gonna yeah. be there most of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, between you know listening to the speakers and you know <coughs> hopefully hopefully being able to exchange. They got the the when you registered for RoofCon, they gave you a link for an app for like a really cool mm-hmm. business card app that you yeah. can like bump with other people Rep and it cap. gives yeah it yeah. gives you know you can make like a little bio and everything and yeah, yeah. Put, uh, link videos and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff to it so yeah um, curious to see how many yeah. how many business cards we can exchange Ooh, and, and do you guys remember forget. yours. Um, what your business I want cards. to do a big shout out no, to. Uh, I didn't. I did. did you? I did. You would I see did. women in construction. Yes, there you go. See us yeah. guys. I don't have no right. business cards. Right. <laughs> I, I left. I, I left saw. mine in my truck. Yeah. I normally would because I keep them in my, in my glove box in my truck. But yeah, well, that's sitting at BWI right now. Right so here. what is it? Oh, <laughs> my business cards. That's not good. Yep. I have my digital business card though. So. That's all that matters. Yep. That's probably better that. than a. It, it honestly is. Yeah. It, it is because it tells right. them when our when our show is. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. Oh, before I forget, Roofers and Recovery will be here as well. Yeah. Which plays That's a big awesome. role, and and there's two speakers that will be speaking, maybe more than that. But I noticed, I think on the last day, uh, that'll be good. We got to watch them at Win the Storm Challenge, and it was pretty pretty intense, pretty emotional, pretty inspiring. 
I must say. So you would be surprised how many roofers are in um, recovery. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be talking about the, the stigma of addiction. So uh, that, that'll be good. That'll be very influential for, for those of, of you or us that are in recovery. Uh, there's Wayne Sweeney. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. Big, proud supporter of uh, TC Backer and Company. Yeah, uh, man. We always appreciate everything you do for the community and, and partner up with us on certain projects. So we appreciate you. But yeah, uh, for sure, man. what else? What else you want to talk about here? Why does everybody think he looks burnt? I, I think it's I just think like hitting my, yeah, hit my head. It does look like he's burnt. Yeah. Because yeah. he's right under the light. Yeah, I am right under the light. It I'm really not. I'm not burnt. Probably burnt. Um, huh? We definitely got to talk a little bit about the 21 Turkey Sleuth that we got yes. coming up. Um, it's going to be the 100th episode of Behind the Tool Belt. That's approaching fast. Yeah, it is. If anyone wants to participate, you know, donate, contribute in any kind of way. Um, need information. We have a Facebook page that we that we created for it. Um, Vic's gonna pop it up on you guys' screen right now. Um, it's at 24 Penn Street, there which is right across the street from Penn Market, between Market and what is that Duke? Between yeah. Market and Duke, um, that's gonna be on the 24th of November, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Eve. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be great, man. We're we're doing 60 turkeys this year. Um, we did 30 last year. We're doing 60 this year. Yep. We're shutting the entire street down. Um, we're gonna. We're trying to get some live music. We're. It's. It's just gonna be a blast. So, yeah. um, even if you don't um, have have the ability to contribute, um, just come down and hang out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's the whole TC Backer family yeah. is gonna be there. Yeah, from come the down, get a to, plate, get something to eat, help us out, whatever, whatever. Just come down and hang out. It'll be a good night. Like you said, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Um, Wayne said, "Locky man, you're definitely locked in." And there's Bucky. Good to see you, brother. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Um, and, and, and team player, he's our newest uh, member of the team in our sales that is under Lauren's command. Um, and I think Lauren's done a great job with him and he's mm -hmm. caught on very quickly. Um, thank you, Bucky, for all that you do. And, and Vic, I see he's watching too. Can't wait to pick turkeys. Um, but yeah, that'll be great. So in case you're just tuning in or you haven't heard of the 21 Turkey Salute. So what happens is, is we, we deep fried last year actually yeah 21 turkeys at the same exact time um it's pretty wild to watch mm -hmm. and so if you want to just come down and check that out we're going to do 22 um 20 was the uh, world record guinness book of world record and i think what's the american because that's the the guinness is the european mm -hmm. uh world record but there's an actual american something world 23 23? Okay. 23 is the record for the American one? Yeah. Gotcha. I was looking for the Split name of what, you know, there's the Guinness happens. Book of yeah. World Records. So there's something American Book of right. World Records that we also had beat, I think. I'll have that info for next week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll have more info for, on that next week. But we're going to do 22 this year, which will be, you know, the Guinness Book of World Records and I think the American record, too. Um, but we're going to end up doing uh, 60 total, not at the same time. So we're going to do like 22, uh, 20 and like 18 or something like that, which yeah. will equal 60 turkeys um, or 62 or whatever that was. Right. Um, but yeah, we're totally looking forward to it. We're going to have over, I don't even know how many pounds of food, but we're going to keep a little better track of that this year because I know we were right around a thousand pounds of food last mm -hmm. year. But obviously with the turkeys, and I think we rounded up, you know, like six, 20, 30 turkeys times 17 pounds or something like that. And then we tried to figure out like how many boxes of mashed potato that we actually purchased and things like that. But we're going to definitely, with Tam's help, be able to keep better track of like yeah. exactly how many, yeah. how many pounds. And um, uh, Jana actually ended up purchasing like 240 pies, but we're going to have to like double down on that. Mm -hmm. Um she said we got them at Walmart. Um, I, su I suggested we should probably get them at, at Dottie's. Um, but she said that Walmart was like very helpful and super excited to help us out with that. So we yeah. might yes. stick with that because we're already putting enough pressure on Dottie's to help yeah. us, mm -hmm. you know, with the turkeys and stuff like that. And Pastor Joel wants to cover half that expense of the turkeys and, and so many other people. Matt Bracken, who's a buddy of mine, 
um, his HR lady is going to be reaching out to me. They want to get involved with it somehow. Him and his daughter actually helped pick turkeys last year. They got a lot of notoriety, you know, with YDR and, and that YouTube guy that came by and filmed us. Um, so they'll be there this year. I know Alan Tyson and his entire family, David mm -hmm. KX and all those guys will be there. And, and uh, J.D. Stern, uh, who helped us last year, him and his team will be there to, again this year to help us out. So a big shout out to uh, Stern uh, Movers, great kid, uh, very. Yeah, they did a great job with yeah, that last year. Yeah, man, great that kid. Was, dude, that was such a relief to not have that stress right. that morning. Yeah. Put that, set all that stuff up. Absolutely. They did a great job with that. Yeah. And they came back and tore down. Absolutely, so. yep, so he, he's totally <clears throat> a super psych. I just ran into him um, on Thursday last week and he, he tracked me down. I was like, look, I wanna be a part of it. I was like, dude, you're in. Um, we were talking about setting up at 9 a.m. I really feel like we should probably get down there a little sooner than that. Mm -hmm. Get the pot set up, get the fire extinguishers out, get the oil in, get it fired up, have it ready. That way we can drop our first batch of turkeys like, you know, no later than like 11. I'm thinking more like 1030. Then by 1130, dump the, you know, pull them out, dump the second batch. Right. Then hopefully by one o'clock we can dump the third batch. And that should hopefully keep that flow go a little better than you know we just we dropped them all and pulled them all out and then we did a couple more but then we picked them so quick christ we we were done in two hours mm -hmm. like we just we didn't even, yeah we ran out of food so we definitely don't want to do that this year so that's why we're kind of doubling what we did last year in hopes that maybe we'll have a little bit left over yeah so yeah and we can we can donate that to the well Absolutely. Um, we got the mission that's right across, right the, across street. the street. Um, there's plenty of plenty of places for it. Mm -hmm. Before I go, just a reminder that next week we're going to be starting the uh, contest for naming the turkey. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that, that neat little turkey that was on the flyer that we popped up here a little bit ago, we're going to be having a contest um, on naming the turkey. So we're going to have a, a place that you guys can go to submit your ideas for what we should name him. And we'll... I guess we'll have some kind of prize for whoever mm -hmm. comes up with the name. Yeah, that'll be cool. But I, I mean, my vote's going to be we're going to call it Glenn. Yeah, that was, that's, that's I was the same exact thing. <laughs> I was going to throw a chuck on the box. So I was gonna throw, Dude, you're going to be chuck. wearing the turkey suit, so I only I feel it's right that he should be named right. Glenn. But right. I can't I can't put a vote in. So. Glenn with one or two ends. We'll give him one end. Okay, we'll just give him to make it a little bit different. Yeah, a little different. Saw him, man. He's good with two ends. <laughs> Right? <laughs> good stuff but yeah I'm looking forward to that I think a lot of people are looking forward to it man I don't know how many people I've had reach out to me and ask us if we needed help um, just just good stuff and it's yeah. gonna be here before we know it yeah and you know with with the outpour um, of everyone wanting to help mm -hmm. um, don't take it personally guys if you reach out to help and we don't have a spot for you to actually get your hands dirty we have a lot of people um, just with the TC backer employees. Mm -hmm. Um, so d like I said, don't, you know, feel offended or think that we don't want your help. Yeah. Um, we, there's just so many people that are just in our immediate circle, right. um, that are going to be there that are going to hopefully take care of everything. Right. So, you know, worst case scenario, just come and hang out, enjoy yourself, have a good yeah, time. Just bring show kids. up and help out. I mean, that's really all, all you can do. Just right now, I can't think of anything that we need. I think for, for the most part, most Mostly everything's covered. Now, Drew was getting involved again this yeah. year. He's got some people that will help us out with the mashed potatoes and stuffing and things like that. So hopefully I think we got that covered. The turkey should be covered. The oil should be covered. The pots, the burners. Um, the only thing that I'm thinking of that we're going to need help with again this year is propane. So anyone out there listening has any propane bottles, if you want to donate something, donate propane i don't care if you even go and buy new tanks i would actually prefer new tanks we had someone last year donate an older tank that had the valve that was a little bit rusted out that actually leaked on us we caught it before anything happened but i heard it mm -hmm. i heard it leaking so we, we turned it off hooked up a new tank but just make sure if you're going to help donate tanks make sure they're either new or fairly new Right. Um, that they're not all rusted out and they're per, you know, the new, the new, uh, cause I've seen some old ones that have like the old, the small valve on it. Yeah. Make sure they, they have the updated valve on it. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. give a big shout out also to the mayor of York, um, yes. for allowing us to shut the street down. Yeah. The commissioner, 
Um, they they both made an appearance last year. Hopefully they'll come out again, have some turkey this year. Yeah. Um, but just for allowing us to have the event, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like I said, shutting the streak down. That's that's pretty cool. That is cool to do that. That so, is very cool. Um, shout out to you guys if you mm -hmm. guys are watching. Yes. Um, does Tommy have a picture for us this week? He didn't send me one. No. Okay. Oh, Belmont Bing will be there as well. Jason. Oh Worley. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. Belmont, he'll be, big he'll big be shout out to Jason Worley. Um, yeah, he's going to be there uh, with his coffee. His famous, you know, Belmont Bean coffee, which is one of TC Backer's favorite coffees. Um, I think that we drank the shit out of that for for weeks after that. Oh, yeah. um, he gave us donated a lot of coffee, and there were some left over. Um, he wants to be actually a little more involved this year than he was last year. Not that he wasn't involved. Yeah. I just think we threw it at him so quick. Mm -hmm. He didn't know what to expect, but he really pulled through. It was like the week before or something like that. Not really. even, man. I don't even think it was. I think it was days before. Yeah. Um, but he definitely pulled through for us on that aspect. And uh, I think this year, hopefully, he's a little more prepared because he mm -hmm. gave him more time to think about it. But um, so big shout out to Belmont being down on Belmont Street, York, PA. Check him out. He just had, uh, I think, two-year birthday anniversary for Belmont mm -hmm. Bean. So congratulations on the two-year anniversary. I know it's not been easy, especially with COVID, because think about that. He just opened up as soon as shit shut down. <coughs> right. So congrats for being able yeah. to... To be able to not only make it through, because, I mean, mm -hmm. what's the statistic on, on brand-new business startups? How many fail in the first two years? You know what I mean? A lot. Throw COVID in that mix where you're shutting restaurants down. You yeah, can't have good. you can't have indoor seating and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. So that just shows a lot of not only your business model, but you know, your persistence to be able to fight through that and, and right hold on. to the circumstances and everything as, as a brand new business. Right so on. kudos to you, man. Yeah. So uh, Glenn wants to give a big shout out to uh, Marky and Tabitha. Yes. Yes. They yeah. did an awesome job in this. Yeah. Yeah. These these things are fresh, yeah. Marky. And Are once again, we don't give you much time to get the shit done. No. Um, I, I think Ty just has a sick obsession with watching you sweat. So, well, um, that's just you know that's I, my opinion. Man. I'm not going to say anything, but he did pull, <laughs> he did pull through for us once again in a clutch situation. Uh, so Tabitha, Marky, thank you guys. Yeah, both thank you guys for for pulling through for us once again. Uh, the new threads look great. We love you guys for that. They they've always been a huge partner of ours. Um, I can't thank you guys enough and uh, I should call you more and not only when I need something so I do I do apologize for not calling you to see how you're doing other than you know calling you to say hey can you do something for me um, but I just want you to know I do appreciate you brother and thank you for everything for your mentorship for your friendship for just always being there for me and listening to me when I'm down and out so thank yeah. you buddy he's a big player in our Absolutely. Circle, yes, you know he I mean? is. Our, in, in our our bubble, we like to talk about, yep. you know, in the local York community. Yeah, he's man. a big player, does a lot for the community, and he's a very good person to um, model how to treat people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He treats people with respect, and he's real big into the youth sports and that kind of stuff. And, you know, right. I always rave about youth sports in, in general. You know what I mean? Right. The, the, the valuable lessons you can get from that kind of stuff. Right and on. With him being a coach as long as he was, he just... I feel like that he he plays that kind of into his business right. as well. Yeah, man. Um, and the importance of having good relationships with people and treating yeah. the people that get you to where you are. Absolutely. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, man. Um, you know, just just kudos to you, brother. So yeah, John, John. John's kicking some facts out here. Yeah. I thought it was five years. Fifty percent has yeah. faltered. Yeah, that's crazy. Twenty percent mm -hmm. in the first year. Yep. I wonder what the I wonder what the statistics through COVID were. You know, how many yeah. businesses failed. Yeah, man. That were started up within the first year, yeah. you know, before COVID started or something like that. You know, it's I'd, hard I'd to be say. curious to see that. Yeah, me too. I mean, I mean, look at look at all the businesses that were around for 20, 30, 40 plus years just in York. Yep. That closed their doors because of this. So, um, you know, that, that means a lot, I yeah. think. Alan Tyson said he likes your long sleeves. Corinne. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah their shirts yeah. are nice, man. Yeah. Cool. Well, great. What an awesome episode. <laughs> yeah. we, we appreciate everybody tuning in every week. Alan, Tyson, thank you guys for everything. Um, I like what he had to say here. Um, he said uh, he said it's what we do when we come together. We make shit happen. Yep. You know what I mean? What, what we can't do by ourselves, we can do together, man. And that's for damn sure. Absolutely. That's yeah. fact. We prove that every, yeah. every week, every day. Um, we continuously prove, prove that. 
And I also, real quick, before we, we log off here, mm -hmm. um, I want to give a shout out specifically to my guys that are working in the field in Maryland. Um, I appreciate you guys. You guys have been killing it the last two days without me there. Um, I, I, I can't say enough, man. The problem solving that's been going on, um, you guys being able to mold around just being able to talk to me on the phone, not yeah. seeing me in the morning. I really appreciate you guys. Um, we had some hiccups this morning, and you guys, you guys just figured it out. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and so that just speaks a lot, you know, the confidence that you guys have in each Absolutely. other that I have in you well, guys. Well, that's and the team. That, that's your team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, that's good stuff. Give and Bucky everyone. a woo, Ty. Give him a woo. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, over, maybe that tomorrow. That was weak. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah, I haven't had enough Red Bull, and, and we are working on a sponsorship, by the way. So if Red Bull's out there watching, um, <laughs> don't make us cheat on you. Because we can definitely mm -hmm. start drinking Rockstar, uh, yeah. um, but we choose not to for now. So if anyone out there either works at Red Bull yeah. or knows someone that works at Red Bull, give them my email. All right. Yep. All right. Hook us up. We do call everyone rock stars around the, yes. around the place. So. That's right. So yeah. anyhow, hey, yeah. big shout out off, to Red Bull. We couldn't do this without you. Thank before you. Before we sign off, I, wanna, um, I just want to say something. My, my oldest daughter, Tiffany Yori Brown, is on here. And I think this is actually the first time ever that she commented. Oh, oh yeah. I was gonna say if this is the first time her, she's man. been on our show, I then so. I don't know. She's been on there. She's just been okay. On her she's she lucky because I was gonna give her shit. And What's going on, happened. Tiffany? Thank you for commenting. <laughs> yeah. She's I know that you watch, man. but thank you for commenting right. and participating. Yes. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Way to go, oh. Right. And listen. <laughs> uh, another note, guys. If there's anything that you guys would like to, um, you know, would like us to talk about from RoofCon. Yeah. If anyone has any questions about the event, Absolutely. about anything that goes on there, reach out to one of us in our inbox um, or, you know, make sure that you, you hit the bell for notifications mm -hmm. when we go live. So that yeah. way you can be a part of our show when we do go live from there. Mm -hmm. You know, throw your questions in yes. there as well. Yeah. Um, I'd, love I'd absolutely that. love to have Me things too. that I need to look for yeah. for you guys. Yeah, get um, engaged with us a little bit. Let us know that you like watching us. You know, throw some questions at us. Get get engaged. Um, we couldn't do this without any of you guys that are watching us. Like, Gio's on there. Mm -hmm. um, we, we couldn't do, you know, Alan and his family and, and uh, all of our significant others and John Stauffer. Everybody on there, you know, we couldn't or wouldn't do this without you guys. Um, so anyone's got a question about, you know, what, what did we see or like, like earlier we were talking about like Lauren, I know she's got a, a ton of questions for, you know, the, the PAs that she's going to meet tomorrow. And, and, uh, so if anyone's got a question that's whether if it's, you know, industry related or a personal question or whatever, or, or want to rehash one of our old, you know, episodes, mm -hmm. You know, have a question, you know, if we mentioned something that you didn't quite understand, you want us to kind of review what it was, I mean, by all means, post it in the comments, message us, um, wh whatever, reach out to us. I mean, we're always going live every week. It's not real hard to get a hold of one of us, so reach out, get involved a little bit, and uh, be a part of the team. Yes, absolutely. So, so hopefully see you guys yeah. tomorrow or Friday, yeah. whatever day we go live. Yep. Um, we'll see you guys then. Absolutely. And... I guess this is this is it. Everyone That's enjoy it. the rest of your week. Thanks for tuning um, in. Yes. And and see you guys next week. Next week we will be what was what's going on next week, Vic? What's happening next week? Oh, you caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. Next week? Yeah. What's next week, Henry? Next, next week. week. Next week. Next what week for the, show. Next week for the show. Episode ninety four. We'll have a guest, uh, Kevin Kelly with Certain Key yeah. Signing. We'll yeah. actually be on site mm -hmm. at the studio. So that'll be a kick-ass episode. So get your questions ready, okay? And and don't be afraid to bust his balls and talk about you know product availability, the pricing, yeah. whatever. You got any questions? Bring it up. Uh, hopefully he's got some good answers for you, and maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Which, right. You know, I don't know. We're gonna find out. So that's why we're bringing the man, the myth, the legend, yes. Kevin we Kelly. We're gonna drill him on here. He's coming we're in. We're gonna get you guys answers. Yeah, man. We're gonna drill down in no, it. We're just kidding, Kevin. If you're watching, man, it's not oh hell happen. no. We're not kidding. Okay. <laughs> We're going to bust your ass until you give the goods up. All right? So, anyhow. Kevin Kelly's coming to the show next week. Yes, sir. Yep. yep. Kevin Let's Kelly. Yep. Good job, Vic. <laughs> Good job, Vic. That's why we brought you, buddy. Couldn't do this without you, bro. Like, for real. We couldn't do no, this without you. Absolutely not, man. Yes. Absolutely not. So, yeah. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week. 
Thank you for watching. Yes. See everyone next week for episode 94, 7 p.m. Boom.